Hey everyone, so I figured since I'm editing a bunch of photos here, I may as well make a video about it. Um, so one of the issues I have had in Affinity Photo is that like in Photoshop and Lightroom or whatever, it seems like you can do batch editing. You can do batch editing, but it's only from the developer persona on Affinity Photo. So how do you do like somewhat batch editing on a photo persona, which is where personally I edit most of my photos. Um, I don't do a whole lot on the developer persona. So I figured, you know what, let me make a quick video of just showing my editing process and like my, like, um, I guess substitute batch editing. Basically what we're going to do is just, uh, copy and paste um, the entire edit. So I'm going to start right here. Um, what you want to do is take, so what I like to do is take a form of just take everything that I plan to use or take the, everything in the entire edit that, um, without any uh, painting or anything on the mask layers, different mask layers in the adjustments. Um, and I copy that. So usually before I do any painting or anything, I would just select it once I have the edit that I like. Um, and then, so I've been, I've edited a bunch of photos with this same edit. So that's why it's so large. Um, and this is actually a crop on the original photo. So I'll show you right here, right? So that's the original photo. So I just want to crop into this portion. So anyways, um, I tend to just make this a little bit bigger so that I don't have to keep resizing it every time. Um, depending on your computer power, this will actually make it operate slower. So um, I caution you there. It will be a little bit more taxing on your computer, but whatever. Um, that being said, so I select all the stuff I want to copy and I literally just hit copy. Um, so I, I have a bunch of shortcuts, but you can hit control C. Um, to just copy everything. I think you can just right click and hit copy. Um, and then once your computer, again, depending on your computer speed, this could take some time. Um, so you know what? I'll just recopy this one. Okay. So I selected everything. Um, I'm going to hit that copy. So this is what your computer will most likely do if it needs some time. Boom. So not responding and you'll get that blue loading thing. So you just wait it out. Um, depending on how large, how many adjustments I have, it will, sometimes it takes five seconds. Sometimes it takes a minute. It really depends. But um, most times it's like 20, 30 seconds. Um, again, depending on your computer speed, you can just step away, maybe grab a glass of water. By the time you get back, it should be good to go. And the whole thing is, this is going to speed up your edit if you have multiple images that were shot the exact same way to edit, um, because the pacing is almost instantaneous. So uh, I'm done with this image. I've copied what I need from it. So I'm just going to close that. I'm going to grab my other image. So this image is pretty similar. So um, how I have everything set up, I'm just going to do the bit of editing that I do in the develop um, persona here, which is just like a, um, a macro or a lot, whatever you want to call it, that I've made for the details. So the amount of um, sharpening I want to do um, in the develop persona, persona and the amount of noise reduction. Um, that's all I do. And then I'm going to hit develop. Boom. So I've recently started trying to, to edit even as, as undestructively as possible, I guess you would say. So, um, what I tend to do is make a pixel layer on top of this and then any adjustments I'm going to do to the image, I am going to do it on this pixel layer by um, choosing current layer and below. 
Alright, so I'm gonna take that off. Gonna hope the in paint just does a great job of it. Good enough. And I'm probably gonna remove this sign. I missed that. Now, once again. Good enough. And I'll probably remove that. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. So now I'm gonna put my uh, five by four crop, uh, pretty much five by four crop everything. And the next most important thing is making sure you have the right uh, bit bit rate. So um, when I export from developer Sona, when I recommend you do the same, um, developer Sona opens everything in 32 bits or whatever, um, or 32 bit, and then I choose to have it export into the photo persona in 32 bit as well. Um, so what you would want to do before you put this edit is change it to 16 bit, because if you don't, the colors are going to look wonky, um, especially if you've been editing in 16 bit. So, um, this is what, what, what happens if I don't change it to 16 bit from the 32 bit. Um, so I have a macro that I set here to change to 16 bit. It just saves me having to go into um, the document or layer or whichever one it is to change it. Um, and then if I paste it, whoops, so 16 bit. And then if I paste it, there's a steam edit. So almost all of your, you might have slight differences in how you edited the image or how you shot the image, sorry, that you might need to make some adjustments to. Um, I think this looks exactly how I want it to look. So, oh, maybe I'll just brighten it a little bit. So, because I know where everything is, I can just go in and do that. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave that as is. You know what? I'm I'm happy with this the way it, that it is. So, all I'm going to do is just fix the redness on the nose because it was cold out. And again, I I use pixel layer for this. And, and you know, if there's um, anything that you see me doing here and you're not sure why I'm doing it or how it works or anything, just let me know. If you want me to make a video on it, I have, I'd be happy to make videos on like my editing process because I actually have been claiming that I'm going to make more videos and I haven't been doing it. I actually need to start back. I need to get back into it. So that's, that's one of my goals for the rest of the year actually do more videos um, and just keep up with it instead of claiming it and then never doing it because I'm so busy. Well, I'm still busy, but you know, I could make time to do it in between. So um, yeah, so if you have any questions on any of the editing that you see me doing here, just let me know. Um, I have, I'd love to make videos on all of it and I'd kind of prioritize the ones that you ask for before um, the ones that I actually plan on doing. So as, I, as you see anything I'm doing here, you're like, why are you doing that? Like, I think there's a better way to do it. Feel free to let me know. Um, we can have a discussion about it in the comments or I could just make a video on it. And um, if enough people ask for it and that will be the explanation. Um, never hurts to see someone else's process to see if maybe it's a good way for you to do things too. Or maybe it helps you figure out a different way, a better way to do things than the way you do. So now that I'm done with this edit, that will be the end of the video. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the, I guess the next tutorial for Affinity Photo. Um, I, I'm also planning to do just videos on the gear that I'm using because I tend to go for budget gear, but I'm working as a professional photographer. So yes, just, you know, subscribe if you're interested in that sort of thing. And definitely if you're interested in editing videos, subscribe as well. Thanks. See you in the next one.